Assalamualaikum and also good morning. Uh, today, uh, I will try to finish up the lecture on the side labs. And then if possible, we go into the tutorials of the assignment. Okay, first of, uh, first of all, if you look at the if you look at the website, okay, basically I have uh, updated uh, most of the website. So most of the note until chapter ten is already online, okay. And in fact, I would like to highlight for the test. If you notice. The test one is scheduled on the week seven. Okay, will be on Thursday, twelve to one. Okay, so please take that note. Okay, so that you won't miss the test and you prepare for that. Okay, so that's regarding the test, uh, the, uh, uh, regarding the, the update in the e-learning website. Okay, uh, please uh, view it. Okay, uh, last Tuesday, uh, we already talked about the root lockers. Okay. I think we described about this uh, slide. Okay, so uh, basically, most of the commands that is required for Scilab, okay, to run the control system, okay, is basically you have learned it already. Okay, so if you notice that the command is not much, okay. You have only a few, I think the basic uh, command is the syslin, and then the uh, plot command, and then the csim, okay, and then the command of the roots, okay, and then to plot the root lockers basically even, okay. So that's basically is the command enough for you of course, in, if you read the uh, Scilab uh, books, there, is, there are so many more functions that they have. But the one that I highlight uh, before is the one for, uh, that is useful for controls, okay? And not only that, if you notice uh, that uh, the Scilab even make you more easier, okay, for you to do the controls, okay, where the MATLAB, uh, the Scilab provide you with a graphical user interface that we call the RL design, okay, for designing controller, okay. So, the only thing this, GUI, okay, is come in the form of macro, okay, where you need to download the macro, Okay, from the e-learning website into your computer. Okay, and then after that, you need to ex execute this micro in Scilab by clicking the menu File Execute, and then selecting the file uh, that you have downloaded before the RL Design SCI. Okay, once you have done that you will see message uh, saying the execution is done 
and then afterward you can use this command RL design. And if you type this RL design in the side labs, basically a window will appear like this. Okay. And if you look at this window, okay, this window will show. If you notice this one, this is the root root locus plot. Okay, this is root locus plot. And the other one, the other two is basically this is the boat diagram. Okay, this is related to the frequency domain. Of course, it is not useful for us because we didn't learn this one. Okay, so we can just ignore this one, this two. And then the other one here. This is plot of a st step response. Okay, this is plot of the st step response. Okay, so basically, this is the two figure that is important for you in doing control system design. Okay, and on this side, there are certain parameter that we can set. Okay, the first parameter here is basically the. Macam mana ni? Tak nampak? Ah? Rasanya. The screen dia lari sikit. Eh? Macam mana nak kecikkan? Siapa tahu macam mana nak kecikkan? Horizontally. Okay. Saya boleh nampak sikit lah tu kot. Okay. Uh, basically, on this side. Okay, on this side, you will see the parameter. Okay. Where this one is the plan. This is the transfer function for the plan. Okay, the GS. Okay, so whatever transfer function, we just write it here. Okay, so if you change the plan here, basically the response and also the uh, root locus will be changed. Okay, and after you type that, you need to push the update button. Okay, so that you can update the the response and also the uh, the root locus plot okay and this slider is basically the gain in the controller the gain k okay so you can select the this one to set the value of the gain okay and then this is the the controller okay the controller you also you can write the equation the 
numerator and also the denumerator if you add the controller there. Okay? And beside that, you can add a pre filter as well. Okay? And you can have the transfer function also for the pre filter. Okay? And then the below here is the design constraint. Okay? You can add the design constraint here just for guide. Okay? You will draw a line for you so that you can choose certain area. Okay? So this is the uh, RL design. Okay? So let me show you how to to run this one. Okay. Uh, you need to go to the website. Okay, you need to download this one. Okay, this macro. Okay, just click download here. Okay. The only thing after you download, maybe you just show in which folder it is. Okay, so it is basically in the uh, download uh, folder. Okay, once you know that, okay, once you know that, basically, user pkm download folder. Okay, once you know that, you open the Scilabs. Okay, and then in Scilabs, to run the that one you need to execute that macro. In order to execute, you need to go to the file menu. Okay, click the execute. Okay, and then find uh, find the file uh, that you have downloaded just now. is under PPKM downloads. Okay. Okay. You have the fi uh, the the file that you have downloaded here. Okay. So just open that one. Okay. Once you do that, you will see this message execution is done. So that's mean you have already run the the RL design, okay, macro, okay, and then after that you can just type the RL design command, and then just enter, okay. Once you do that, a dialog box will open like this, okay. So you will see that there is a root locker written uh, here, shown here, and this is the step response, and then this is the parameter where you can and set later on. Okay. So initially, it just write whatever. I think the uh, default transfer function. Okay, we can change later on. Okay, so that is how to run the uh, function, the RL design. Okay, once you have that, okay, you can add the parameter. Okay, you can add the transfer function of the plan. And then after that, you can see the, the appearance of the uh, step response okay, of that transfer function. And then you will be shown also the root locus of the uh, function as well. Okay. And then after that, if you want to add the, the controller, you can add, okay? One way in design, okay? 
to do that, we need to we can check if an integral controller is needed. Okay, it is needed only when both the following condition are satisfied. Okay, this is later on we cover in chapter ten actually about the uh, controller. Okay, let's say if your step response doesn't have a steady state error, okay, and also the original system has no pole at zero. So if this is the case, we need to add in integral controller. Okay, later on I will show you what happens if we add the integral controller to the response. Okay. So if an integral controller is needed, then add a pole at zero for the controller. Okay. And then based on the specification, find the region where the closed loop poles must be in. Okay. This is where the root lockers later on will be useful so that we can, from the specification, uh, we should determine where is the area that the closed loop pole should be located. Okay, and then after that, we need to check if there is a possibility of all the closed loop poles, okay, being in the permitted region. If yes, then just adjust the controller until all the closed loop poles are in there. Okay, and then one more step we can do is add a real zero to see if the root lockers is adjusted so that all the closed loop pole can get into the permitted region. If not, add two complex pole. And then after that, you can adjust the controller until all the closed loop pole are in the permitted region. When we say it just means we are adjusting the, the gain slider. Okay. And then finally, test the response of the system with the controller. If specifications are not satisfied, then perhaps need to redesign or use a pre-filter. Okay, let's see an example. Okay. So let's say we have a plan GS to controls, and we want to design a closed loop control system where we need to design the uh, function HS, okay, the controller, okay? And later on also, maybe we need to add the pre-filter, okay? And initially, we just uh, Assume that this HS is equal to 1 and F, uh, FS is equal to 1. Okay? Let's say we have a system, a plan, where the uh, transfer function GS is equal to 10 divided by S square plus 4S plus 8. Okay? And then, normally for when you have a job of designing a controller, okay? Normally, you are given a specification, okay? Let's say the specification design a controller so that the closed loop system has no steady state error, overshoot less than 10%, and settling time less than 2 seconds. So, this is the three specifications that are given to you. Okay, so what are the steps that you need to do? Okay, the first thing, of course, you open the RL Design GUI. Okay, and then after that, you need to simulate your plan. Okay, so in the plan parameter, just put the transfer function. Okay, GS. 
And then after you putting the plant transfer function, you will see how is the response. Okay, the step response. And how is the uh, root locus. Okay. And check against this specification whether it is satisfying this is specification or not. Okay. And normally, it is not satisfying the, uh, the specification that are given to you. Okay? So, after that, you need to design this HS function. Okay? Maybe as an example here, maybe we can add a PID controller, for example, like this. Okay? This is PID controller. Okay? So, if we add uh, the PID controller in this block, okay? After that, you see what, what will happen to the response. Are the response changing, improving, okay? And whether some of this uh, specification will be uh, 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 fulfilled, okay? Okay? So that's when you designing your controller, okay? This is only example. It's not. It's not necessarily this. Uh, this transfer function. Okay. Here, basically, is depend on your uh, your knowledge how to design the controller. Okay. And later on, maybe after we design the controller, maybe we get almost close to this. But sometime we couldn't fulfill maybe one. Uh, of the uh, specification, okay. One more that we can do is the pre-filter, okay. Okay, the pre-filter. We may be uh, if we add the pre-filter, it will also uh, may also improve the uh, response, okay. Okay, let's see if we do this in the RL design. Okay, first of all, we simulate the plan. To simulate the plan, basically, you just put the transfer function here. Okay, the numerator, the denumerator. Okay. And then, you will see that the response will be changing, the step response. And you will see also the root locus will be plotted for you. Okay? And since our system here, we have the transfer function like this, where the uh, denumerator is second order, the characteristic equation. So, and... I think if we find the root for this one, we will get two roots, okay? And their root is basically a complex and conjugate. So that's why we get this pole, okay? These are the pole indicating the root of this characteristic equation, okay? And since our K currently the gain is at 1. So, this is indicating the current location of the roots in the root locus because the root locus basically is just uh, from here, it's just going up and then from here, just going down. Okay, there are two uh, root locus there. Okay. And then, uh, currently when k is equal to 1, the location is here. Okay? The location of the roots. Okay? It has traveled from when k equal to 0 is here. Okay? When k is equal to 1, it is here. Okay? And if you notice that here is the location is in the left-hand side of the 
imaginary axis. Okay, you can try that, putting that equation. Okay, you have 10 here, and then you have s to the power of 2, and then you have, what is that? Uh, 4 multiply by s, and then you have 8. Okay, and then after you, you put that one, just update. Update, okay. So you can have that your response is like this. Okay. Note that it will become steady state somewhere five point something. Okay, instead of one. Okay. So this is how is your response. And. This one also, if you want to view, you can scroll using your scroll button. You can see in, the, in bigger, you can zoom in actually. Okay? So you can see how is your uh, your root locus uh, in close. Uh, closer. Okay. And then after that, after you you analyzing your response and you, your root locus, okay, now you can work on your controller. Okay. You can work on your controller. That means you can add set, uh, the controller here with certain transfer function. Okay. One of the possible thing that we need to do. Okay. If you look at this response, the response before doesn't. There is an error, okay? Because it not, uh, it doesn't uh, settle at equal uh, at the output equal to one, okay? Because when we are applying a step response, a unit step response, basically we are targeting that it will be a, the steady state value should be equal to one. Okay, the final value. But if you notice just now that we have some t uh, somewhere b uh, five point something. Okay. So uh, one way we can add a uh, an integral controller. Okay. In order to add an integral controller, we just need to add one over s. Okay. So if here. You just add 1 over S here. You see the, the, the response currently is like this. Okay. And the root locus is currently like this. And then after we update, uh, we adding the 1 over S. What will happen? You notice that this one go to 1. Right, because the integration is basically is good to eliminate the steady state error. Okay, so if you have a steady state error, the best way is to add the uh, uh, integration. Okay, so that it will eliminate the steady state error and make sure that you will get a steady state value at the output the response equal to 1. Okay? And then this one is already changing, so you can and zoom.
Okay, if you zoom further, actually when we add the integrator, 1 over S, basically it will add another poles located at origin, where S equal to 0. Okay, that's why when we change, when we add another poles here, now your root locus with uh, where before one is going up, the other one is going down, but now it is changing. Okay, because now the root locus is one uh, from here, basically will go that, that way, and then from here will go that way, and then from here will go that way. Okay, and at the gain k equal to one, basically the root is here, the three roots. Okay, and with that gain, basically we get the response like this. Okay. So, if you look at this, basically we already settled one of the specification where no steady state error. Okay. But if you look at the overshoot, the overshoot still greater than 10%. Right, because we wanted 10%. But this is, the overshoot will be a, some, somewhere near to 20%. Okay. And talking about the settling time also, the settling time here, I think about 8 seconds. Okay, where our requirement is only two seconds. Okay? And now after this, okay, another type of controller that we can apply is PID. PID is stand for Proportional Integral and Differential uh, Differentiation. Okay? So, this is actually uh, the best controller that normally used by industry, okay, which result in a good response. Okay, so let's say we just add this. This control uh, the PID. The PID basically, if you get the transfer function for the PID, basically is equal to like this. Okay, maybe one of the Example, we can put as s to the power of 2 plus 12s plus 52 divided by s. Okay? So, because we still have the integral part, that's why I still have divided by s there. Okay? So, if we add that, we have s to the power of to the power of 2 plus 12 multiplied by S plus 52. Okay, you do that and then update it. See what happened? Now, you, you notice that the settling time is already below 2, uh, below two seconds. Okay, and then the only thing, the overshoot is still higher, okay, getting higher, okay, and you can look at the, these are the plot of the root lockers, okay, something, something like this, okay, uh, Why it become like this? Because when you add the PID, okay, beside it adding the poles located at zero, it's or, uh, it also will add another uh, two zero, okay, and from this equation, if you get the zero, basically one of the zero is here. It's a complex number. The other zero is here. Okay, and because of these zeros and these poles, the root locus will change again. Okay, the root locus will change again. 
and then you will find that when k is equal to 1, the root will be located here, will be located here, and will be located here. That's why we got the response like this. Okay? Okay, and then the next step, okay, uh, maybe we can improve to get the percentage of our shoot down by increasing the controller gain, this slider. Okay, for example, like here, okay, if we slide it, we increase, you, not, you will notice that the response will be changing. See, the overshoot will be getting lower. Okay. So maybe let's set something near to three. Okay. In fact, if we increase more a little bit, I think we can get it below 10%. Okay. But the only thing, uh, I just set it to three because I want to show about using the pre filter after this. Okay. In fact, this one, if you set it more than three, I think you can already fulfill the specification. Okay. Basically, this one, you already fulfill the specification. Okay. But the only thing, I just want to show you the pre-filter. So, actually, this one, we, we are, uh, the pre-filter are not required anymore. Okay. Because if we increase uh, the gain, uh, I think somewhere uh, around five, I think we got the response fulfilling the, uh, the, the specification okay, that are given. Okay. Let's see the next one if we add the pre filter. Okay. The pre filter, when we're adding the pre filter, Basically, we want to cancel out some of the because in this case, we have the zero here. We don't want the effect of the zero here, okay, in the controller. So, what we can do, we can add the pre-filter so that as the same equation like this so that it will cancel out, okay. So, let's try. Okay, just copy this and just uh, put it as a dom uh, denumerator for the pre-filter. Okay, the only thing when we put the pre-filter, if, if, if this value is 52, I think this one also we need to write down as 52. Okay, so that it will cancel out the magnification effect. Okay. And now if we update, you see what will happen. Okay. So you will get the response like this. Okay. You can see that it is very smooth. No, uh, the overshoot is very little. This one, if you... The root locus is like this. In fact, this one, if you want to zoom in, you can zoom in. Okay. So basically, the overshoot is very, very little. Okay. And basically, just slightly above one second, it can and become steady state. Okay, so the settling time is around 1.1. Okay, and then of course there is no steady state error, so we have already fulfilling the specification. Okay, so this is the RL design, which are very, very useful for us in 
in designing the control system. Okay? And it will make us easier to, to work. Okay? Because otherwise, if we just want to uh, work from the mathematical equation, it, of course, it is very, very hard for us. Okay? Because we cannot view especially the response. Okay? When we are implementing the step response and also uh, the uh, root lockers. Okay? So that is the power of Scilab when we use the Scilabs. Okay? So basically, I think uh, that's all that require for you to know how to use the Scilab for control system. Okay, maybe one thing that I haven't put in the slide. Uh, okay. So far, I have teach you how to use the command from this prompt, okay? The interactive commands. But how about if you want to write a if you want to write a program, okay? So if you want to write a program, it's not difficult, okay? You can you can test the command first in this prompt, okay? Like you did before, okay? And then afterwards, you can paste them in a file like this. Okay, you click this one. Basically, a file will be open for you. Okay. Let's say from this file, maybe some of the command that we used before, we just want to add there. Because with that file, basically, let's see, we copy this. And then let's say we get the, uh, we take the simplest one. Okay, we paste this one, G1. I think uh, instead of G1, I just change to G. I'm looking for the command of the T. Uh, we don't have that. I think we just write it down. Let's say we have the T uh, we set from 0 until let's say we just put it as 10. Okay. And then after that, we get the y. Let's say y is equal to c sim. Okay, we have a step. Okay, for the T and also G. A 
Okay, and then we just plot. Okay, plot T versus Y. In this one, we need to put a semicolon here. Okay, we have a function like this. Okay, and then you need to save it. Okay, maybe just type it, maybe try. Okay, and then once you complete, you can run the program, just click this run, execute. Okay, you click this one you can see that it is running okay it will run all the commands okay straight away until finish the last command okay so that's how if you want to do a program okay you just write it in the files and then basically when you write that command actually when you click the execute here actually there, uh, there is a command here execute and then the file with the part names, okay? So that's basically is when we use the, uh, the Scilabs, okay? It will be very, very easy to use, okay? And I think you should use it a lot, okay? to help you in under, understanding this course. Okay, so any question about the Scilabs? Okay. Uh, we go back to our. Okay, mungkin masa dah nak habis untuk apa? Mungkin kita buat tutorial esok saja. Uh, tapi before that. Okay, semalam saya buka, uh, saya cek ada lagi few person yang tak hantar lagi assignment. Semalam saya cek ada empat orang lagi, cuma hari ini saya tak cek lagi. Okay, kalau kita tengok, basically hari ini ada tiga orang lagi yang tak hantar. Okay, maksudnya daripada semalam ada seorang lagi yang hantar lah. Okay, ada tiga orang lagi. Ada tak orang ni kat sini? Mau kawai. Kenapa tak hantar? Muhammad Faiz Kenapa tak hantar? Saya dah email balik kan Suruh upload kan Kenapa tak upload? Macam mana kamu ni? Zubir macam mana Zubir? Kenapa tak hantar? Ha? Saya tak terima hard copy. Okey. Dan cuma 
Saya bila you tak hantar ni saya mulalah tengok the detail kan. And then saya tengok yang ni mokar uh, Y ni nampak okey sikit, sikit lah sebab saya boleh checking your activity. Okey. Kalau kita tengok outline report. Okey. Adalah juga sikit-sikit tengok the website ni. Okey. Okey. Saya boleh tahu you aktif tak aktif. Okey. And then kalau saya tengok yang lain. Nampak? Semua kosong. Macam mana ni? Satu kali je tengok. Dua kali. Macam ni ke cara kamu belajar? Punyalah penat saya upload the information dalam tu. You tengok sekali dua je. Kan? Kalau kita tengok seorang lagi pun lebih kurang juga. Sebab kamu perlu hantar sebelum esok. Sebab esok kita akan discuss the in the tutorials. Jadi bila kita dah discuss, memang kita tak akan accept lah lepas tu. Okey, ini pun hanya dua beberapa kali saja tengok ni. Okey. Jadi sepatutnya you kena aktif lah. Okey. Jadi kalau kamu nak hantar, hantar sebelum esok. Kan? Kalau lepas esok memang saya tak akan terima lah. Okey. Dan siapa-siapa yang tak hantar esok, saya akan bagi markah kosong lah. Dan esok pun kalau boleh kita ada group discussion. Kalau boleh semua datang. Kalau siapa yang tak datang pun saya akan bagi kosong juga lah. Okey. Boleh ya? Eh?